Okay, so this is our last little video and last little lesson from this uh, from this unit on exponents. Okay, and the title here, you know, it says solve problems with growth and decay. True, we will be doing that, but we're really just looking at two special situations. The first one is doubling time. Okay, doubling time. As soon as you see the word doubling time, hopefully that makes you think of growth. Okay the time it takes for a population to double in size. So guess what number is going to go at the growth decimal part? Look right down here, follow it right there. Look at that. See that? Number 2. Okay, so the 2 is obviously there because it's going to be doubling. The confusing part is the t over 60 in the exponent over there, but we'll talk about that in a second. So it says up here, the population P of penguins in one region doubles every 60 months and can be modeled by this relation. All right, so first of all, uh, this T over 60 here, what that is is it's a fraction and the reason why is, well, it's not years like it was on the previous questions where it was like three years, this will happen, or four years, five years, or five days, six days. This is talking about a certain period of time that isn't as neat and clean, I guess. It's 60 months, okay? Well, that means that let's say something only took, let's say you wanted to know what happens after 30 months. Well, what you would do is you'd type, you'd type in a 30 over 60, and on your calculator, just go 30 divided by 60, what would you get? You'd get 0 0.5. So you would you would just create a decimal on top there instead of making a strange looking fraction okay so t is the time in months be careful don't um don't put years up there or anything like that okay if they say one year make sure you put 12 months where the above the 60 okay and p not as you know is the initial population just like the other videos showed before okay maybe i'll put it right over right about here all right. It says, what do the values 2 and 60 represent in this situation? Well, the 2, as you know, we already said, that means that it's, it's there because it's doubling. Something's doubling, so it's twice as much. The 60 represents the time it takes for it to double, okay? The months that it takes to double, okay? Now, if there are four, I might as well leave it there. If there are 400 penguins in this region today, how many penguins will there be in two years? Well, first of all, they've told us 400 penguins in this region today. So the 400 is going to go where the P naught is. That's the initial population. And in two years, well, two years is 24 months. So let's see how that could all be written up. Okay, so the 400, as I told you, goes right there. So the 400 is right there. Okay, the 2 is still there. The 24, 2 years is really 24 months, and it goes right there, over 60. You can just take your calculator, go 24 divided by 60, you get 0 0.4. And then on your calculator now, all you do is you go 2, exponent 0 0.4, then times it by 400, and you'll come up with 527.8, or basically 528 penguins. Okay? I guess I could just hit delete, and that would get rid of that. Never thought of that. Okay, so that's how you do that on your calculator. Could you do this on a graphing calculator? Sure you could. Sometimes it's fun to do it on the graphing calculator. Let's try it right now. Push Y equals, and let's go 400. Put 2 in the middle because it's doubling time. Then, exponent. I'm not sure if I need to do this in brackets or not, so I'm just going to do it just to be on the safe side. I'm going to go bracket 24 divided by 60. And there is our strange looking exponent up there. Okay, let's push the window settings to make it look nice. Um, X minimum, let's make that 0. X maximum. Okay, X maximum is time here, so we want that to be quite a few months. So let's go with like, uh, I don't know, 100 months. <laughs> I just picked that number. It's bigger than 60, right? Um, the minimum is 0, and the maximum, how big is this going to get? Well, 527.8. Well, let's make it like 1,000. 
make it a big number. Okay, there's our population. It's growing. Uh, okay. I see I made a mistake here. How come that line didn't grow? That's because what I should have done, instead of typing the 24 for time, I should have put an X right here. Once again, I've made a mistake, but I'm not going to delete that mistake because it's important to see that mistake. So instead of 24 for time, I'm going to put an X there. All right, I'll hit delete. And it's X over 60, so that when we see the graph, to make a proper graph, you have to have an X somewhere. And I forgot to put it. I put 24 over 60. So if I graph it now, look at that. It's growing. And then if you want to see uh, 24 months, just type in X is 24, 24 months. And look at that. You get 527.8, exactly the same number we got down here. Okay? So that's pretty cool. Sorry about that mistake there, but hopefully that mistake was helpful. Okay, the last question. It says, how many months will it take for the population to reach 3,200? Okay, as you're doing this, um, what you can do, how many months would it take? Well, you're trying to figure out t. You're trying to figure out the time. So what you do is you start at, start at 0. Well, I guess I'm, I'm just going to show you what's here. Okay, make t zero, and you end up getting 400. Okay, when you make t 60 on your calculator, that's going to be it's like saying two times 400. Okay, and you get 800. Then you make t 120, and I'm just trying to think. My friend who made this uh, note. She decided to go by 0, 60, 120, 80, 180. She decided to double the time each time. Hmm. I guess that's a good tactic. I'm not exactly sure why, though, but basically changing the number for t until you eventually get 3,200, which is what you're hoping for. Okay? And then once you get the 3,200, you can say, oh, it took 180 months. So you just keep typing in until you get the number you're looking for. Okay, you keep typing in an, a different number for t. So she found 180. If you're using a graphing calculator, let's make sure our window's big enough. Y maximum's 1,000. X maximum's 100. Okay. Hmm. X maximum's going to have to be bigger. So let's make it like 500 or 400. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe that's going to be too squished. Okay, that's too squished. I'm going to make x maximum like uh, 200. There we go. That looks a little, little better. Okay, and then what you can do is say, okay, how many months will it take to reach 3200? Well, just hit trace and get y. See y right here. Try to get it really close to 3200. Let's keep going here. We want 3200. There's no way of just typing in the y value. 32, 31, that's pretty close. And notice over here the months, we're at 180.85. Oh, nice. 3200. That's about as close as I'm going to get right there. It's about 180 months. So you can see that the graphing calculator can also help you solve this. So jumping over to this question, uh, it's a half-life question. Half-life, well, what is a half-life? A half-life is the time it takes for a quantity to decay or reduce to half its original amount. Sometimes I have uh, jokingly talked with students and said, um, if there is a piece of poo, dog poo, that is, there it is, it's gross, and it's on the sidewalk, and you go walking past it every day and as you go by each day you notice that it's starting to decay it's starting to uh, get smaller and smaller and one day it's about half as much as it was maybe the rain came along and kinda took care of it so it's getting smaller and smaller and eventually it'll just be gone like hopefully it'll just be gone eventually and you know you won't have to look at it each day but a half-life is the amount 
that it takes for a quantity, so in this case it was the poo, dog poo, to decay, to become half as much as it originally was. So what number, what number do you think should be in the exponential uh, decimal, or the, I don't know, I guess we called it the, the decay decimal? Well, there it is right there. See how it says one half? That, you could put 0.5 there, or you could put one half, it's up to you. All right, probably 0.5 is actually easier to write there. Now, it says radon. Now we're getting to a more serious type of thing other than dog poo, okay? Radon has a half-life of 25 days. The mass of material, m milligrams, can be modeled by the relation. Here it is. Okay, t is the time in days. And m naught is the, is the initial mass. So once again, we have a, an exponent up here. That's because this number is not nice and clean like a, you know, one year or one day at a time. We're talking 25 days here it takes for, for something to reduce to half, okay, of what it rig originally was. So if they ask you, how much of a 4 milligram sample is left after 63 days? You're going to put the 63 where the T is, okay, and on your calculator you'd go 63 divided by 25 and you would get 63 divided by 25 is 2.52 okay and notice that the 4 see how it says 4 milligrams there that goes right in the front okay that's the initial amount and if you do this on your on your calculator any old calculator just go 0 0.5 to the exponent 2.52 okay and you will and then take times your answer by 4 and you will come up with this answer okay therefore there will be 0 0.697 milligrams remaining after 63 days okay scientists use this half-life idea all the time that's how they date uh, dinosaur bones and things like that they use carbon a lot to uh, to do this kind of dating so it's a very important thing that scientists do and uh, so if you're wondering why we're learning about half-life, well, that's something that's used a lot in math, especially in science, okay? And, uh, yeah, mathematicians must admit that science is very important. Math is the tool that they use to do the science, okay? So the next question is, how long will it take a 400 milligram sample to decay to 25 milligrams? Well, once again, this is a bit of a tougher question because you're just going to be typing in different different numbers of days until you get the number 400. So the teacher that I borrowed this note from, she decided to type in, uh, she went, she decided to go up by 25s each time, just 0, 25, 50, 75, 100, until finally when she put in 100, so she put in 100 in her, in her calculator, 100 divided by 25 is 4, so she went 0 0.5 to the exponent 4, and then times that by 4 and she got 25 as an answer so this became the answer that she figured out it takes a hundred days to decay to 25 milligrams okay again on the graphing calculator if you want to see this I will quickly show you let's get the equation back up here and this time we're not going to make any mistakes like we did last time are we okay so the initial mass was 4 inside the brackets we have, you could write 1 half or 0.5, I'm going to use 0.5, it's just quicker, then exponent bracket, I'm not going to type in the number for t, okay, I'm just going to put an x there, over 25, divided by 25 bracket, and then I'm going to graph it as soon as I make sure I have good window settings, it's decay, so we want x minimum 0, x maximum, hmm, I'm going to put at least, I don't know, 150 there, 150 days. The y minimum is 0, because we don't care about numbers below 0. And then y maximum, let's make it at least the initial amount, which was, I guess, uh, it's a 400 milligram sample. Okay, it's a 400 milligram sample, so I'm going to do like, start with 500 here. Okay, let's see if it decays for us here. Okay, I told you I wouldn't make any mistakes this time, and I'm uh, 
Oh, it's supposed to be 400 right here. I had four. Second function, insert. Oh dear, delete. Just go second function, insert, four. Okay, now it should work. My mistake is that I was looking over at this equation right here, when really it said 400 milligram sample, not a 4 milligram sample like it was up here. That was my mistake. Oh boy, aren't mistakes human? Okay, you know this is not a robot talking to you, don't you? Otherwise you wouldn't see these mistakes. Instead you see a foolish Bentley doing this stuff. Okay, so hit trace, and then you look on here and try to find the spot where we get a 25 milligrams, where y is 25. So y is getting smaller and smaller as I go down. Oh, it's about there. Okay, it's right about there. We're getting really close to 25 milligrams. Okay, so on the graphing calculator, you can kind of approximate exactly where to go. It was about 100 days, just like it told us to right here, using trial and error. So basically these questions here where it asks you how long, uh, those are definitely tougher questions, okay? They do take some trial and error. Alright, that is enough for now. Have a great day.